acceptable on this level. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That they're sabotaging because they've never, they never been to this level. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, it doesn't matter what level I ain't never been to. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going there. You know what I'm saying? Super Mario. <laughs> yeah, we're going to level eight and we walk. Right. Right. We warping. Cause you ready? Right. Your ice level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This little slippery out there. Bring your hammer. You know what I'm saying? So you said it's a lot of self sabotage. It's it's a lot of self sabotage. You know what I'm saying? And that's why the average person is not ready for this. <laughs> they not ready for it. That's fine. Right. When the lights right. turn on. Ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, here we go. So um, so we're gonna start it out. Uh, welcome everybody. I see y'all. Everybody watching. Uh, we about to get live in a minute. We got our guest in the building, El Fuser. You know what I'm saying? Holloway's idea in the Holloway's building. Holloway's idea. You know, we are at Maitland Conservatory. Y'all are watching behind the scenes. Y'all are watching the live. Y'all are watching us record this live. In tune with T Miller's recorded live in front of a studio audience. So that's how we're going <laughs> to rock this thing right here, you know? All right. Um, Chris Cruz, uh, DJ, your boy, boy. Yo, DJ, your boy, boy. Hey, man. I need, man, we might need you to come back and do that mix again, man. That live mix, uh, he shut the party down. All right, so to get started, what we're going to do is um, when you're talking, just talking to the mic. Okay. Um, and let me see. We're going to start with uh, a drop. And, you know, you just introduce yourself. Okay. Uh, tell everyone you're at Men Conservatory. Okay. And you're in tune. And you could say, you could say you're in tune with T-Mill. Okay. Um, however you want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, um, and then we'll just go from there. Yo, 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 let me get a mic check from you. Mic check, mic check, one, two, one, two. Yeah, man, Fuse got that gully voice, man. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo. You got that voice, man. Me scared to go to New York. <laughs> I used to hear those dudes on the radio. I was like, yo, they sad. I used to be like, oh my God, it's real up there. Oh, oh New York. Show. You're right, that old New York, you know what I'm saying? Man. God. All right, let's see. Let's get this back. All right. If y'all here sniffing and ain't no booger sugar, it's just allergies. It's real. All right. You know what I'm saying? Real. All right. Here we go. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the drop and it'll, you know, just introduce yourself. I'm at Maitland Conservatory and you're in tune with T-Mill. However, whatever flavor you want to put on it. Okay, cool. What's right. going on? It's your boy L. Fuser from Revolution Radio. I'm at Maitland Conservatory. I'm in tune with T-Mill. You know what the deal is, man. Yeah, there we go. All right. So... Let me see. Let me get everything good. All right. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of In Tune with T-Mill. I'm your host, T-Mill, live from the Rocket City. You will now be encouraged and entertained. Nothing will change until you change something. We're going to change the status quo. And as always, we're changing the status quo one voice at a time. And this is 2017. We're only three months into the new year, and you guys have been showing so much support, but I need y'all's help. I, we, we need a little more support, all right? Now, as technology gets better, it, we seem to get lazier. Mm. So I need y'all to work a little harder and share these episodes. When you watch it, if you like it, share it. If you hate it, tell me about it. You know, share it with me. Tell me what you don't like about it, because guess what? I don't know everything. And um, we are recording live on... Facebook Live. So if you guys want to see the visual, if you guys want to, cause, man, the Facebook Live is killing y'all on the podcast listening. Mm. Facebook Live, they're coming out to watch every episode. Nice. You know what I'm saying? They're putting the numbers up to watch on Facebook Live. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think y'all wanted to see my ugly mug, but y'all must want to, y'all like the video. So I need the podcast people to stand up, you know, because there's some nerds like me to like riding to work, That's you know what I'm saying, That's and right. listening to a podcast in the, in the car or, you know, at, at, at home and want to turn the podcast on. I need y'all to come out and show some numbers right. because, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the live video folks is killing it with the numbers. But it's all good. However you like to listen to the show and you enjoy it, please do so and please share and subscribe. We're on iTunes, tune in, Now Live. Well, Now Live was like 2003. They ain't even here no more. But wherever you're listening to a podcast that we appreciate it. This episode, uh, we've been talking about art and attainment, and we've been talking about so many different uh, topics. I wanted to bring in someone today 
that that not only is well versed in a variety of topics because I couldn't really narrow down what I wanted to talk about today. But I called this brother up and I hit him up and he said, man, we can talk about whatever. It don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> we can talk about parties. We can talk about politics. We can talk about uh, uh, the world. We can talk about the moon. We can talk about whatever. And I also wanted to get you guys input on topics as well that we could talk about. And I think I got one. But today I wanted to bring in a special guest because, again, I'm, I'm, I'm no professional. I can't do this alone. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this brother has is, is definitely ten toes down, as we like to say it, in the culture. He's not just walking it. You know, he's not just talking it. He's walking it and talking it. And, and he moves in silence. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to, if you don't see him, that means you ain't in the right place. You might want to check where you at. All right. So if you don't see him, you might want to get your GPS out, find where you need to be at or find where he's going to be at and be a part of it. He's passionate about what he believes in. And when you're passionate about what you believe in, it, it pushes you toward greatness. And I see him doing nothing but great things. I see him uh, being all over from New York all the way down here to Alabama and I hit him up because I didn't know where he was. I was like, yo, are you in Birmingham? You in New York? You in Bama? You in Maryland? Yo, where you at? And he was like, yo, depending on the day of the week. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, today he's here in tune with T-Mill L. Fuser. What's going on, man? What's going on, good brother? What's going on? I want to say first off, because I don't believe in high sign at all, man. We keep it 100, man. Like uh, The whole Revolution Radio staff, we appreciate you for reaching out. Uh, we appreciate everything that you're doing for the culture and everything you're doing for the community as well. And we want to give a special shout out to you and Holloway's idea for making this bridge and this connection, brother. But what's going on, good people? Hey, you know what I'm saying? You guys, we are watching live. You're listening. You're watching. You're looking live. Marcus Sims, come on in, man. There you go. We got Marcus Sims in the building. On, and I appreciate that, man, because what you guys are doing is something that uh, Marcus Sims in the building, y'all. Uh, one thing that I appreciate, first of all, is the name of it, Re-Evolution Radio. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we were talking earlier before the show, there was a point in time to where all we had was the radio. Mm. And it had to be that way. You couldn't change yeah. because we didn't know how to change it. Right. We couldn't change radio or or suggest make suggestions. It was like, I don't know, the the the... You know the the Catholic Church. You know what I'm saying. It was you couldn't get there. You couldn't get into it. Right. So uh, for those that don't know, uh, let's talk about first. I want to make sure Marcus, you can get in where you fit in. You know how this is, man. This is a, a family affair. You know what I'm saying. We got a uh, we got a, a chair. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. You guys, this is the, and again, I, I like I like to say we're having conversations. We're not having interviews. We're doing conversations. So when 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 our when our brother steps in the building, we got to make sure he's good. Kena, what up? What up? Keenan, what's going on? Don Battle. You guys that are in the chat room that are watching on Facebook Live, y'all can drop any topics in the chat room. All right? P keep it PG because, you know, we, 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 it's daytime. When, when, when the sun go down, we can talk about whatever. <laughs> but right now, we're going to keep it PG. Don Battle, I need you to drop a comment in there uh, or, or a topic. Keenan, I need you to drop a topic in there. Holloway, I'm sitting right in front of Holloway, but I'm going to tell him because he's in the chat room too. <laughs> Chris Cruz, I need you to put a, uh, a, put a, put a topic in there. And then DJ, your boy, boy, I need everybody watching to put a topic in the chat room. And when I start this show off, y'all know I always say this. I can't do it by myself. I had to bring in some professionals. So also, uh, the man that just stepped in, he's probably off of a, uh Iron Fist binge and probably hadn't got any sleep. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, he's been holding it down in radio for 30, 40 years. And he's only 16 years old. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Marcus Sims is in the building. <laughs> Man, I'm gonna tell you what that Centrum gets you through, bro. <laughs> that Centrum Fifty. Centrum gets you through, bro. Centrum Fifty. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so that's silver. That's silver. I need it. Oh. Waking up ain't as easy. Oh, you know? oh. so uh, Fuser. For those that don't know, you know who is L Fuser. You know, and and you gotta let them know because they might think you know you're from across the border or something like that. Okay, L <laughs> Fuser. There you go. Is Che Guevara, man. That's uh, Motorcycle Diaries, Che Guevara. Mm. I used to go by the name uh, Jay Early when I was mm. rapping. And the reason why I did that is because I was born in Atlanta. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, we moved up to Liverpool, New York. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, from Liverpool, New York, down to Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Then back to Atlanta, then to Selma, Alabama. Well, I developed a different... You just named like 10 places. That's yeah, what's up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I developed a different style 
with those accents. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they didn't know whether I was from Philly or if I was from Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Or mm -hmm. from New York. So early, early is a Philly thing. So mm. they started calling me early. My name is Jabril, so Jay Early. But after I left the rap game the first time, which was 2008, after the situation with Atlantic, you know what I mean? Like, I felt when I came back, mm -hmm. that name wasn't heavy enough of a name. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want to just do music. I really wanted to impact people's lives and help people. You know what I'm saying? So, El Fusutter was the name that I came across. El Fusa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put that sauce on yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, that was the name that I came across. Because Che Guevara has always been one of the most inspirational figures to me. Because mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't understand about the name, and I don't want to go on too long, but what a lot of people don't understand about their name is this brother was not from impoverished people. Mm -hmm. He was a doctor. Mm. He was the son of rich people in Argentina. Wow. He left all of that affluence to go to Mexico with mm -hmm. Fidel Castro just to help the Cuban revolutionaries. So he reached back. He didn't have to do that mm -hmm. to fight against the aristocracy. Mm. And he did it his way. So that name just seemed to be, and in Latin translation, it means in English, the raging. And my style is very uncut. Like mm. you say. Raw, you know, unfiltered. It's raw, raw, raw. Yeah, so, you know, straight raw. With that being said, I feel like the name, the name kind of found me as well. Yo, man, we got to give it up for, for El Fuser coming up with, you know what I'm yeah, saying, with some history that. behind that name. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't just eating cereal one morning and say, yo, I, that look like a dope <laughs> name <laughs> for a rapper. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, I'm going to do that. Right. His, his name got a whole history to it, right. y'all. So um, now we're talking about uh, hip hop. We're talking about, uh, we were talking about, um, oh, I wanted to ask you. So you said the situation with Atlantic. What, mm. You know, what was going on with Atlantic? Okay, so this is what happened with Atlantic. Uh, back when we were... Before the enlightened stage, mm. we would make what the young kids would call, I guess, trap rap. Mm -hmm. And I tell y'all so many times, trap rap didn't just start. Nah. Trap music came out what year? 2004? 2004, yeah. 2004, yeah. you ain't yeah. doing that new. But anyway, right, right. we was making that kind of music, trap and music. I made a record called Go Harder. Mm -hmm. And if you search on YouTube, you got to find it. It's on the Floyd Mayweather video, mm -hmm. highlight video. Well, somebody from Grand Hustle reached out to me mm -hmm. and said they were interested. So I sent the song into Grand Hustle. T.I. wasn't feeling it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. But this is when you're getting your name out in the industry, people talk. Mm. And they end up from different departments, work with other departments, and they might hear you. But well, anyway, uh, me and a group called Trey Pound, um, Killer C, Dirty K, um, Kappa Real from Camden, you know what I'm saying? All of the brothers, we had a group called Trey Pound. We got invited to meet. With Atlantic Records. Mm -hmm. Now, this is in the Atlantic Records of the past. This is the Atlantic Records with everyone from Def Jam that was getting laid off, scampering to Atlantic Records to try to, you know what I'm saying, get in the game. Mm -hmm. Lee R. Cohen was coming over to Atlantic Records. Mm -hmm. um, Lee R. Cohen, he has his style of doing things. Mm -hmm. um, during the time I dropped a mixtape called Hip Hop Revolution, it was a series with the uh, the first DJ was a mixtape assassin. He's out of Denver, Colorado. We did pretty good numbers for independent artists on that mm -hmm. com. You can look it up right now. And we were in the middle of a controversial debate with all hiphop.com and HH board. Mm. And me being the raging, mm -hmm. I'm not going to pull no punches. They was asking me, that's when Soldier Boy was out with the Your record and all of that. They was asking me, so what do you think about these young kids, how they rap? And I was like, it's trash. Mm. And it's killing the culture. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. When they were like, oh, well, you know, he's from the South, and this is how they mm -hmm. do I was like, I was born in Atlanta. That's a lie. Andre 3000, who could arguably be the greatest rapper of all time, he's from the South. What's your mm -hmm. excuse? So I went in. Uh, the guy from HH Boy, he didn't like that. He went on CNN. He said a comment like, uh, well, this kid uh, who just dropped mix, um, Hip Hop Revolution, uh, he could be the next great star, but he, he talks too much, so wow. you know he's going to ruin his career. You know what I mean? But anyway, that led me to the Atlantic meeting. So I came into the Atlantic meeting with a reputation. Uh, we got offered a deal with the Atlantic, uh, with Atlantic Records, the team. Uh, some of the individuals weren't able to make the meeting. Mm -hmm. But I left the deal and I turned it down. And I turned it down because I just didn't like the direction that they were going to take my career. Mm. I feel like we would have been no different from a VIC, from a Roscoe Dash, one hit wonders, 
single mm -hmm. on records, mm -hmm. talking about selling drugs, talking about laying up with a bunch of women, and we'd be out of there. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I didn't feel like that was the right decision. And I did some Afton shows. Anybody who's been in the grind knows Afton shows. You got to pay them to perform, mm. basically. You know what I'm saying? I did a couple shows, and I remember coming to the realization, maybe this thing ain't for me no more. Maybe the game has passed me, and I just left it alone. Mm. But that's the Atlantic story. Man, so man. So not only do you have uh, history, but you've got experience. experience. You know what I'm saying? Good and bad experience, uh -huh. and, and experience that when you talk, you know, people should listen, you know, and whether or not. And here's the thing. I think that people forget when when you hear people, a lot of people, they don't want to hear the, the the bad that happened in the situation. They want it's like if you can't tell them, they think if you can't tell them the exact way how to do it, then they, it's like they don't want to hear it. Mm. But they got to hear how not to do it right. in order for you to know how to do it. I can't just tell you, you know, what I'm saying how to fish. I got to tell you exactly why fishing is good you know what i'm saying like versus going down and getting you some 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 fish from long john Silvers. i gotta explain the whole context to you so you understand when you were out here with a with a fishing rod what you really doing you know what i'm saying to understand the context of it so people want like the the cliff note version mm -hmm. of what to do and what not to do yeah. so uh um, going down in the the chat room if you guys got any questions if you guys got any topics because this is open topics with uh l fuser and an elf user, I'm, I'm trying to say it the way he said it. It's it was, it was gangster. It's so, <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about uh, uh, a lot of different open topics. So, one question in the chat room asks, what are your thoughts on the Remy Ma and Nicki Minaj uh, battle beef and who won? Me and my HG, hollow to the left. We, we was just talking about this. You know what I'm saying? What up? Like, like, what I've been hearing on the internet is disturbing to me. And it's disturbing so, for so many reasons. That's a complex Complex question. Mm -hmm. um, if we just talking about the battle, of course, Remy killed him. I mean, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not close. There's nothing to talk about. Just right. like Nas killed Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. Nikki has a machine behind her that Remy doesn't. Mm -hmm. Remy, if you listen to everything she's done from the time she got out of prison, she was coming in Nikki. Like, she, she's not trying to be pop. She's not trying to be crossover. She really wants to be the king of female, I mean, the queen of female bars. Now, another thing I've heard that's disturbing that I've got to address, and we talked about this, we discussed it. Mm -hmm. All of y'all that's disrespecting Remy Ma, talking about some papooses writing her raps. You need to go to Big Pun's second album. Mm. And you're going to see an interesting name on a few features. Remy Martin. Mm -hmm. So before papoose was even a word spoken in Brooklyn, Remy was there. Like, mm. she loves she loves the culture. She believes that you should have to battle for that spot. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about the diabolical plan that's going on. Mm -hmm. When Remy did that, what she did for everybody, male and female, prospect and veteran, is bring a focus back to lyrics and hip-hop. Mm -hmm. and, and she made everyone sharpen their sword and say, the disc record matters. Word. Because for about five or six years, we've been going on to a point where Dissing and lyrics don't matter. You don't have to live up mm -hmm. to what you say you are anymore. So somebody can write the hardest diss record ever. Joe Buttons pinned a hell of a diss record to Drake. Mm -hmm. But because he's not relevant mm -hmm. and Drake has a machine behind him, oh, yeah, it's nice, but he's broke. Right. That didn't save you back in the day. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Having money didn't save you. Like, Ja Rule had a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Irv Gotti, Murder Inc. was popping. It's easy to see when you look at me. If you look closely, 50, you don't back down. This boy was coming out of Southside Jamaica, Queens. Anybody that's been to Southside Jamaica, Queens knows in order to sell crack in Southside Jamaica, Queens, you got to be something. So he didn't have much money, but he had the streets. And it seems like Remy, for the first week, she captivated the streets. But when the PR department came around, it seems like her energy is dying out. So, I mean, I, I want to give a big shout out to the women of battle rap and the women MCs, mm -hmm. the femcs. That's something to aspire towards. It's no knock against Nicki because, I mean, I'm not the biggest Nicki Minaj fan, but Nicki ain't horrible in that. Like, would you say she's horrible? She's not horrible, you know what I'm saying? But it's like you said, the machine, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? 
we already know who's writing the rhymes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So Safari wrote the rhymes. Right. You know what I'm saying? Hold on, could you say that again? Because some people don't want to accept that fact. Now. Safari oh. wrote the rhymes. Mm -hmm. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? Now, after Safari uh, and her departed, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You didn't see too much hip hop coming out from Nicki. You nah. know what I'm saying? Safari, you know, when you hear him spit, he's on something different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But he understood exactly what Nicki needed in order to shine. And mm -hmm. I want to say something else yeah. real quick. Because um, you mentioned that um, Remy brought the bars back, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to hip hop. Mm -hmm. Now, look, in between this particular battle, mm -hmm. there were two other disc records that were dropped as well. All right? Mm -hmm. There was uh, a Waka Flocka. Lord. <laughs> uh, Gucci Mane. From Southside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, disc dropped by Waka. And then there was a Young Dolph. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, disc dropped against Gotti. Yo, Gotti. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so when you look at those three disc songs, mm -hmm. you tell me which one's the best. Right. Yeah. For real. Y'all let, you know, let Remy come head. in and, right. and, and smash y'all. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. A disc is a disc is a disc mm -hmm. until you drop the bars, G. Mm -hmm. you gotta have them bars. You, you know what I'm saying? Bars. I definitely think that, um, you know, with, with, with Remy that she, she upped it you know what I'm saying, again, to, to again to, to a sport. Because, again, we haven't seen that I know of, you know, in the last, unless I missed something, in the last 10, I ain't going to say 20 years, but, you know, for in the last, that sport, that combat between, uh, that lyrical combat, you know, between females. We just haven't seen no, it. Yeah. And not on that level. No. You know, of course, on the on the battle underground and whatever, whatever. Yeah. Maybe some sneak disses here and there, mm -hmm. but never to this level. Never. Um, and so I think that's good, you know, for... Hey, for Tim, Tim, let me ask you something. Yeah. Because you're a student of the game, you're a student of the culture, you too. Definitely. And the brother right here. Yeah. Is it is that a more impactful female disc record than the real Roxanne? Mm. I've been asking myself this question. Because mm. I've never seen a female MC get a response nationwide from a disc record like she did. Mm. I'm... I don't know. That's a great question. That's, That's a, a good great question. question. Cause now the real Roxanne, uh -huh. who was she going at? She was going at the fake Roxanne. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then uh, along the ways, you know what I'm saying? Um, you have, uh, you have. Okay, let's just bring it back to this uh, Nikki and bring it back to Remy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We'll just do that. Uh, it was powerful, but. <laughs> it put something else on the map. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When they uh did the uh the rock sand beef. You know what I'm saying? It did. Mm -hmm. And it kind of it did. It I shined think it, a light. You know, I, and I think it did, um to to answer the question, like I think it did because had it not happened, we wouldn't be here today talking about the, the Nicki Minaj thing. Oh. However however it's 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 a thumbtack like on the timeline because now, before there was there hadn't been a Roxanne Roxanne there hadn't been you know that and so it just wasn't heard of females was oh no you got to do this you got to stay over here mm. stay in your lane be pretty do whatever yeah. whatever whatever then she did that that was a thumbtack up there like oh you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying they coming for your neck they coming for bars cool but then Nikki I mean uh, uh, Remy kind of came in and man like before think about this now before some y'all y'all gonna hate this. Before Pop came and started doing his dissing, Texas just got it. it was a big, you know, the way he did it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? You, of course, you had no Vaseline. You had uh, the bridges over. You had all these different ones. Pop kind of came in and did it like on a, not only on a hip hop level, but then on the street level as well. It was kind of like, yo, I ain't, I ain't never heard nobody come at nobody like that. Hit him up. You know what I'm saying? Real personal. For so it felt personal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so my, my point was to say, because I don't want you to lose your thought. No, go ahead, go ahead. I don't want you to lose your thought. It felt more personal. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When Remy, the way that she did it, and to me that was a thumbtack. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. Roxanne, though she did it, it felt more, it party. felt kind of, yeah, party, yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. business. It yeah. was like, all right, we cool, we good, this, that, and the other. But it didn't feel like I'm coming for your neck. Right. Remy like sounded like she was, you know what I'm saying? Like if she'd have seen it outside, it was going down. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it was a thumbtack. So to answer your question with that, yeah. Right. And and now that I, I remember the real Roxanne mm -hmm. was really the fake Roxanne. Word. Yeah, yeah. Roxanne got 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 son. That's yeah. what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I think of it. But interesting point. This is over discussion, right? Right, right, right. Man, I got I got I gotta talk on it. Hit 'em up was the best disc record. Mm -hmm. Up into either. 
Yeah. Like, I gotta agree with you, man. Like, hit him up. Pac's talking. Better mm -hmm. know Vaseline? Yeah, G. Because, like you said, the <laughs> level of disrespect. Uh -huh. I hit him up. And what a lot of people don't know about hit him up, we talking about the legacy and the history. And I didn't learn it until I went out to LA. Pac freestyled mm -hmm. the first part of that verse wow. the night before. Oh, okay. And this part, uh, and this is legendary. Whenever people give me the Biggie lyrical compare, and I'm from Brooklyn, when they give me the Biggie lyrical thing and be like, Pac is just, now Pac was lyrical. He was more poetic, but he was lyrical. Mm -hmm. When he says, it's like those Sherm Heights think they learn to fly, mm -hmm. but you burn, mm -hmm. you deserve to die. And, and the way he started the song off, that's why you you know what it Man, is. It was, it Google it if you don't know. <laughs> Have you ever heard anything? No. Was Ether that disrespectful? No. Nah. Jay Z cried over Ether though on Hot 97. It was because he he felt disrespect. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now this is idol. Let's be honest. Let's be real. That's what it you is. Know what I'm saying. And then you had your man who you Damn. want who you want to be like. And I'm a Jay Z fan. You know what I'm saying? I. Hollow. That's heavy though. Right. He. That's who he was chasing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because look, it's. Jay Z coming in the game ninety six, mm -hmm. it's a gift and a curse because he has no one left to compete no with. No one, he can't compete with uh, Pac. He what don't. year did L get? get? Uh, you said uh, big, uh, big L. L. It was 90, 97, right? Seven. But see, yeah. L wasn't <clears throat> dropping tapes like that. No, he was. He was. You know he, was he wasn't. He was mainstream. mainstream. He was more mixtape guy. Um, yeah. He was and, right there. Like, yeah. Close. If he wanted to, I think he could have, mm -hmm. but still he kind of, you know, a little hard to deal with because he speak on heavy stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. He just he ain't with show. Yeah, Big L neither. Yeah. Um, Pop gone. Biggie gone. Uh -huh. I, I can't compete with the greats. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm new. Mm -hmm. So now what I got to do is I got to compete with uh, somebody child. with the golden child who mm -hmm. he... Who he's thinking in his mind? I don't even see you. Mm -hmm. So ooh, there is no competition. Yeah. Ooh, I'm not ooh, competing with you. Hey, I don't see yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? So what you do is you pay homage by getting his uh, sample. Mm -hmm. You pay homage ooh. in order to get the attention, mm -hmm. so I can snake you and destroy you, or attempt to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, attempt or attempt to. to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because now I'm mad. Mm -hmm. Not at the fact, not at Nas, at the fact. At the fact that Biggie and Pac is gone, yeah. and I can't compete. I yeah, know who I'm, a, you know, I'm and fighting the, with ghosts. And the only one I can't <laughs> yeah. compete with don't see me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, what well, that brings to uh, are you, Jay Z fan? I'm, I'm both. Yeah, definitely a, a Jay fan. You a Jay, Jay, you a Jay, Jay, Jay and Nas fan. I'm more of a. Uh, more of a Nas fan. Nasty Nas, I, 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 I like Nas with the consciousness that Nasty he brings. Nasty Nas, right? And you, Jay, right? I'm a Jay fan. I can't, I came from. Wasn't fan of his Uchi Wally days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to, to be honest with the Jay <laughs> thing, I'm going to get Jay this much. Biggie, to me, is the most overrated legend that we have. Whoa. Mm. Because when you put him bar for bar with some of the guys at that time, mm -hmm. Biggie had the juice now. Don't get me wrong. He had the mm -hmm. juice. Uh -huh. But... I can't honestly with a straight face say he was more lyrical than Raekwon's Built for Cuban Links. Thank you, sir. I can't mm. say honestly with a that's, straight face. That's my favorite rapper. You know what I'm saying? Time, was so. he more lyrical than nah. Big Pun? Mm. Big Pun nah. took lyrics seriously. Yeah. His delivery let him down. Mm -hmm. Was he Illmatic? Nah. nah. No, he wasn't Illmatic now. Mm -hmm. So Jay, to me, Jay is a better lyricist than Big. Mm -hmm. So really... Chasing mm. gold? You don't think so? Uh, lyricist, no. Nah. Biggie? I, th I think Biggie was better lyricist. Big was borderline basic nah. for a New York rapper. Uh, mm. He I, was. I can't, I can't see it. <laughs> he was. I, I can't see him being basic. Let, let's, take, let's take it back yeah, real yeah. quick, Tim. I'm sorry. Let, let's take, good, it, back. Let's take it back. New York was this. Mm -hmm. It was the five crews. And for all of you young heads, uh, you trappers, Go watch the Get Down, man. If you don't want to listen to yeah, us man. old heads oh, yeah. tell you about hip hop <laughs> and all of this, the Get Down put some new age seasoning on it. Word. The mm -hmm. dude from Dope, they do a great job, man. Mm -hmm. Shout out to that whole cast, they're nasty. So that'll teach you about hip hop. But hip hop, just to be real, hip hop was really ABC rhymes for about 10 years. Mm -hmm. Until a guy came along named Rock Him. Oh, yeah. Rock Kim was the pharaoh of New York. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. He was the pharaoh of New York. 
Then Cat started catching up with him like Cool G Rap, who oh, gave him one of his fiercest subliminal battles. Yeah. Came Big Daddy Kane. 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 Big Daddy Kane. Kane. You know Kane. what I'm saying? You had these guys, they start creeping up. But he still was Pharaoh. He was Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. But then live at a barbecue drop. Mm -hmm. Nas was 17 years old, G. Yeah. And he cooked everybody on the verse. He cooked them. Akinelli was on there. Mm -hmm. uh, was it the Mad Professor? Large Professor, mm -hmm. Large, Large Professor, professor um, and Nas, and Nas, when everyone in the city heard that verse, Nas was the new Pharaoh before it even happened. He was the golden child. That's why when Illmatic dropped, yeah. even though Illmatic originally was just 10 cuts, mm -hmm. that's it. It was mm -hmm. 10 cuts, and you had little interludes. You had halftime for the halftime, yeah. you had New York, New York. You know what I'm saying? You had life's a bitch, and then you die. And I gotta AZ's say, it. AZ man. killed Nas on that. Can we be real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 AZ still one of my favorites. Too. Underrated too. AZ still yeah. one of my favorites. Underrated. And Switch. now uh, another thing is for for those y'all that need to go back and do your homework on Rakim. Rakim didn't curse. He did. You know, curse. people forget right. Rakim was spitting and killing it. I was a and, and didn't curse. You well, know, hey. so to, 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 to get to your to get to your point as well, you know. um, Nas being so young and then some of these other guys that were coming up, right. they were young and so they had it sort of had an advantage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was kinda like, all right, I can get into it's it's like taking college prep classes. Mm. So you you went and took this class in college, right. G Rap, you know what I'm saying, Kane, all this, y'all was in college. But then we started taking the courses and started studying y'all at a younger age. Mm. You know, y'all was studying as well, but we were able to study you at the at the peak, you know, where you at. Yeah. And now we're studying that. And now I'm coming in with more ammunition. I'm able to learn a lot more. I'm learning the cheat codes. I'm right. seeing, I see more of the game right, than you do. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if it hadn't been for you, I wouldn't have seen it. But, you know, Nas is able to get a little bit better that way. You know, the J's and the big L's and the you know, fat Joe's and all that. Nas had a flow. <laughs> I, I need y'all to hear me, man. So we're going we gonna to do this real quick because I don't, I don't want to forget. Because I want us to make sure that we uh, that we get this last question in. Okay. Um, Timmy, I have one on here if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, one of them on here, um, one of our nice people chimed in and said, Holloway and L, you guys are crazy. Remy <laughs> 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 um I'm just kidding. They didn't say that. Okay. Right, <laughs> yeah, because he Ed was about to get up and who? All you see him taking off the two, 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 Holloway goes out on the court. Right. Mm -hmm. Preseason game. Mm -hmm. He puts 40 points on someone. Right. Mm -hmm. That's great. Holloway, Holloway put 40 points on someone. Is that going to translate when Holloway hits the regular season? Mm -hmm. My point is this. Is her diss record going to translate to record sales? Because if that's the case, then mm, it is what it is. It's a nice memory. Right. It's something that you can put as a footnote. She, everyone thinks she dissed Nikki. Right. But, so when she drops her second album, because no one bought the first album. Right. <laughs> is someone in this market today going to buy Remy Ma record? If not, the all it did was it made her popular till January, I mean, till June, July, August. Right. And, you know, you know, after that, it's like she put up a good preseason numbers. Right. And, is it, and, and because of that, that's why I'm like, if I'm Nikki. I wouldn't have even replied. Right. That was my whole thing. I'm like, who? Honestly, I'm like, who? No, I think she had to. See, I don't think she had I really don't think she had you're, to. You're saying it from the industry. <laughs> word, word. I just don't think she. I got a question for all it. the industry arguments that, that I hear. Mm -hmm. I need y'all to look it up. Who in hip hop sells records anymore? Mm. No one. Mm -hmm. I can bring up my favorite artist mm -hmm. from my generation, which is 50 Cent. He's not the best. He's not the dopest lyricist. Mm -hmm. Well, y'all jump on me. I know my hip hop. <laughs> is okay. Most of them are my guys. Right. But favorite artist, because I've never seen an album change the culture like Get Rich and I Trying, is 50. Mm -hmm. But that being said, yeah, that bring your Drake, your Wayne, your future who sells nothing for real. He really just sells singles. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to throw 12 million records on Get Rich and I Trying at you. So nobody sells mm -hmm. 
albums anymore. Mm -hmm. The the leading, I think the leading album last week was some guy, I can't remember his name, he was on The Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. and he only sold 500,000 copies. Mm -hmm. If you would have sold 500,000 copies back in 2004, <laughs> that might have been considered a flop. Yeah. Drake's album dropping, he drops like 300,000 a week. So, with that being said, I think it was genius on the part of Nicki, but she, she should have got the clearance from the label. She mm. did bad business. She didn't get the clearance. What's that? The ether sample. Yeah, the ether sample. She didn't get the clearance because mm. she was selling a lot of singles, mm -hmm. and that's how these artists sell their records now with Thank singles. You. They they don't make albums anymore. So I hear that argument, but I don't feel like hip hop carries the weight anymore for that argument to to lie. Let me say something too. Um, also, to your to your point with the Fifty Cent um, statement. 50 Cent also did that at a point where Napster was big. Yep. Mm -hmm. Line wire. And Napster, I was on. Line wire, yeah. And so to be able to come on and sell and do a diamond status, you know Good what I'm God. saying, at that time when it was in its peak, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. at its highest, everybody I knew in college was hitting yeah. them up. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Lowe, You know what I'm saying? Life. <laughs> and uh, Marcus, I'm going to address uh, your statement as well. Um, now, Here's the thing. Remy understands her point in hip hop, you know, saying where she's at. She understands she's not on a level where uh, she sells or goes platinum in terms of what she does. Mm -hmm. Now, the one thing that she does understand is that she knows how to get money where she's at in her point as far as her level, her platform. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So she may not be aiming for the platinum status because she doesn't go platinum. Right. But that does increase the money that she does get for where she's at now. Mm. Now, the other thing about that, how does it increase it? Because you take out the biggest female artist by showing that they have no credibility. Yep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm a blessing with these bars for seven minutes. Yep. And then I'm going to make you go into hiding. Seven minutes. She's Ooh. already on love and hip hop. So she, <laughs> you know, so she that increases her money. If we're going to talk mm -hmm. at it, talk talk about it from an industry standpoint it increases her market value for where she's at she doesn't go platinum on her records we know that she know that but i'm going up the, i'm gonna make vh1 up this check and everybody else i'm gonna make them up this check you know what i'm saying and then i'm going to force nikki to have to come out and say something but now she don't know what to say mm -hmm. so what she tried to do she tried to take the drake approach drops a whack song to me in my opinion you know what i'm saying and she just shows everybody uh oh, the, the fraudulent nature go that she needs safari yeah she needs safari and she showed that bars do matter yeah you know what i'm saying that's my thoughts on it that was remy ma just chiming in so she, <laughs> <laughs> she, like, she wants to be on next complex flavor hey, hey, yo, man, <laughs> appreciate you all right we got you we got you <laughs> Marcus Sims, you know what I'm saying, had the, you know, we talk about hip-hop. Marcus Sims had one of the best, first of all, mm -hmm. shout out to y'all having an intro, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> on, on, on your EP, because nobody's doing intros. Mm. Uh, we need to do an intro show, like a DJ intro show. We're just going to play intros, mm -hmm. you know, just, just intros. But Marcus what? Sims, you know what I'm saying, dropping the, the intro on the Complex Flavor. I need y'all to go wherever you listen to music, your Apple Music, Tidal, Personally, I'm on Title. They pay a little more to the artist. But Title, uh, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Music, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to music, My except space. for the free mixtape sites, they ain't paying y'all nothing. Nah, Go wherever geez. you listen to music and download Complex not Download it, stream it, do whatever. Go check it out. Listen to it um, and, and check it out, Complex Flavor. I also want to talk about uh, Re-Evolution uh, real quick. Okay. Um, tell everyone what that is and then where they can find it. Okay, Revolution Radio. And Andy's got on the dope shirt, so I know y'all watching, yeah, you know man. what I'm saying? Copy, man, copy, copy. Yeah. Let me tell you where you can get it. Revolution Radio, uh, like I dropped a video, I know, I know mad people from the hood. Uh, shout out to the west side of Atlanta's on four. Shout out to Flatbush. They was like, what's up with this weird-ass video you just did? <laughs> you know what I'm but, but anyway, I know I dropped this very <laughs> sketch video last week talking about what Revolution Radio is. Revolution Radio is like, all I can sum it up is it's a wave. Mm -hmm. It's a way, man. We, 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 an outlet, you know. Yeah, an outlet. Know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's an outlet where you can really be you. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like a lot of people, like yo, you can be you, and then when you be you, yo, you need to chill out. Nah, <laughs> if you come on this brand, this brand is you and you with this brand. So mm -hmm. anything you do that's that crazy, you gotta live with the consequences. 
the, the brand is a sponge or an amoeba. It, it grows out of what the life of the people is right now. And what the life of the people is right now is mm -hmm. a lot of people are hurt, a lot of people are mad, and a lot of people feel disenfranchised. Mm -hmm. They feel like they don't have a voice. So mm -hmm. Revolution Radio is giving these people a voice in entertainment, in news, in music, in singing. We got mm -hmm. a lot of brothers that are working with us right now that are training to be videographers mm -hmm. that didn't have that money to go to school to do it. Mm -hmm. A lot of sisters that couldn't finish or couldn't make it into Julia, and they want to act. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So we're making a way for that to happen. You can get to Revolution Radio by going to Facebook.com slash re slash Evolution Radio or dash Evolution Radio.com. You can also hit us up on Twitter. Uh, same thing, um, re Evolution Radio on Instagram. You can come to my fa page, El Fuser. Uh, you can come to uh, Brother Malik's page. Uh, Malik, you already know. I mean, we're easily accessible. We're on YouTube.com, Re Evolution Radio with no dash. Uh, the last thing I'll say about Re Evolution Radio is this mm -hmm. the reason why we named it Re Evolution Radio instead of Revolution Radio. Uh, the, uh, the original answer is because back in the day when we went through that war with H.H. Ward, we was doing our own radio show mm -hmm. and playing what we wanted to, and we called it Revolution Radio. But the real answer, to get introspective again, is after the 70s, we already went through a revolution stage as a people. Mm -hmm. We went through the Black Panther thing. We went through Martin Luther King. We went through uh, Malcolm X, uh, Patrice Lumumba, and we didn't <clears> get the results that we wanted. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we didn't get the results that we wanted is exactly what this brother's talking about with title. We were taught a theory of evolution, this Darwin, Darwin theory mm -hmm. of evolution, where we were evolving with the mind that wasn't given to us, I mean, mm -hmm. that, that was given to us by somebody who didn't have our best interests. Mm -hmm. Re-evolution radio is telling you to get up and do, do for self the way they taught you in the nation, Mm -hmm. But at the same time, keep up with the trends. Yep. Be evolving. So we still want the revolution, but we want the evolution as well. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to change with the times and mold with the times and be the amoeba that I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? So re-evolve, man. Re-evolve. We, we're like the, what is it, the Galactopus Islands? With a turtle. We yeah. evolve in anything, baby. <laughs> Tune in and drop out, man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, y'all. We were talking on the show a couple weeks back about some new island that just, you know, came up out of nowhere. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember where it was. Y'all remember on the show. But, you know, there's, there's nothing new, you know, under the sun. That's but, right. again, it's about, like you said, evolving and adapting to, to what's going on now. And then we have to... We have to get better, you know. We gotta, we gotta better, yeah. you know, get stronger. We gotta do these things, you know. So and and it takes some work. It ain't mm. it ain't just as easy as as people think. You nah. know, it, it takes some work. It's gonna take some some dirt. It's gonna take some some scuffs up, some scuff ups, and you know, somebody we might lose a couple folks. You know, a couple right. folks might get lost. Right. You might not see them no more. But right. it's gonna take some hard work. So uh, first of all, I definitely want to thank El Fuser for stopping by thank you, and uh, you know what I'm saying hanging out with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you, bro. And um, for all your hard work, I want you to introduce the song, Hard Work, that we can close out the show with. Hard Work Dedication. Hard Work Dedication uh, was produced by my brother, uh, Big City. Shout out to Big City. Yeah. And his Tenfold Project. That, that project is crazy. I love it. Keep doing your thing. Yeah. Real quick interjection before I introduce the song. Uh, Revolution Radio, we're starting our tour on March 26th in Toledo, Ohio. From Toledo, Ohio, we're mm. coming down to Chattanooga, Tennessee. And the dates will be on Facebook.com. We're also working on our mm. own original domain for Revolution Radio. But you'll get the updates. We're going to be everywhere. You're going to get sick of seeing us. Mm. My hard work dedication was a song that I came to it. And quite honestly, I'll sum it up like this. I see a lot of new artists, mm. and they're not dedicated to their grind. But they're dedicated to success. <laughs> they like mm. the popularity. Mm -hmm. But you cannot get what you want, the dream that you hope to achieve, mm -hmm. unless you strive for it. So hard work dedication is about just that, hard work dedication. It's the reason why Floyd May Mayweather calls himself TBE, the best ever. Mm -hmm. He's been boxing for over, what, 30 years? 30 years. Is, yeah, 30 years, life, yeah. parents breaking up, all of this stuff he's been through, but he's still undefeated because of the hard work dedication. So hard work dedication. dedication. Let's do it. Yeah, man. So drop out, man. <laughs> all right. We had someone that chime in. They said they wanted L and Holloway and T Mill to do something over the five fingers. 
Okay, I mean, we can do that. You I got some beats on them. I mean, let me type in here. Their cowardice level will not allow it. <laughs> you already know. I'm, I'm, I'm with it. You know what I'm saying? You already know how to hit this. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we still on live with this. You know what I'm saying? What's up? Um, I, and I, uh, I saw the comment down there, you know what I'm saying, as far as Big L. You know what I'm saying? Because I remember that. Number one, on, they were doing the, um, that's when they had the seven-minute freestyle. You know what I'm saying? Um... The Big L, Big L and Jay-Z. Oh, and so, you definitely have a point as far as Jay-Z saying that he saw him as one of his biggest threats. The only thing is um, competing, you know what I'm saying? Niles was on a higher level, you know what I'm saying? And so, uh, as far as reach, Jay could reach Big L. He had more potential to reach Big L, you know what I'm saying, than Nas, you know what I'm saying, uh, because of where they were going for in the industry, you know what I'm saying? They were going for a, a type of an industry look, you know what I'm saying? And Nas was being, he had been put on as being the God, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so that next space was open, you know what I'm saying? Of course, Big L was somebody to be respected, you know, I mean, bar-wise, you can't mess with him, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But on the industry level, Jay wanted that Nas that Nas platform. Hallway, real quick, Big L is an Uncle L, LL, Cool J, L, just for the record, right? Uncle L, shout out to, you know what I'm saying, LL, Cool J. You put him on the Mount Rushmore. Put him on his desk records. You know what I'm saying? He done made a few folks cry. Yeah. Hey, was this who came in here? Oh, my gosh. She, you know, for those who don't recognize, she was at the sneaker ball last week, and for whatever reason, she posed with a condom the whole time. <laughs> no, every picture I had, you were holding a condom, Mike. You got one oh. picture of me with a condom. Holding up a condom. But why did I have the condom? Tell, say that. Why, why were you holding up a condom? condom? Yes. What, 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 the, what was the event? A sneaker ball. Well, what was it for? I guess it was for those who like sneakers. No. It was a charity sneaker ball for our AIDS organization. Thank you very much. Raising yes. education about HIV, AIDS awareness, and that's cool. But y'all might, you know... So that's why Ronji had the condom. Okay, so we got. I guess we went hit finish. Oh, man, man, I'm home to get up. I'm gonna. I gotta greet you, man. Yes, sir. Man, nice to meet you, my man. Yeah, we got. Yeah, we gotta get. Some, we gotta link up, man. Cause I was like, we could.